I know Marie, the other Maria was, uh, let me just give her a quick call just to make sure Maria is okay, coming. Um, hit the record button. Okay. So we can record. Did you invite Xenia's team as well, Lily? No? Yes, yes. I, I don't have any, any um, contact oh. information on Xenia's yeah. team. Yeah. Yes, please, please. Invite right, anybody and everybody, Yulia. Yes. No, it's just, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't home at all, so, okay. Oh, you guys hear the thunder? Well, no thunder here, just a bunch of heat. Oh, yeah, we're having, we're having a mass storm right now. Oh, wow. Thunder, and, and I was, I was telling you, I, I, because I live in the Pacific Northwest, we have a lot of very tall Are you pines, like bull pines, 80, 90 feet, and they're, they're, in my backyard here, swaying all over the place. We're always worried when it's windy. <laughs> the, it, the, the Zoom is on the fire team. I know you responded. All right. All right. Bye. I've got one more coming on. Like, she's just waiting for Mark. <laughs> Let's see. Welcome, everyone. Let's see. Okay, there's Maria. She said welcome. Are you muted, Maria, or what? Can you hear us? I think we can yes. hear her, right? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. We, we can hear her. We can see her how, smiling how face. How's everybody doing? <laughs> We're excellent. <laughs> All right. So, Dean is from Midland. This is from Midland. So, is everybody having hot weather? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 90s? Is that hot? <laughs> hundreds is hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're having hundreds. Yeah. That's my kind of weather. Do you like do you like it real warm? Right? Oh yeah. The hotter the better. I'm always cold. Yes, me too. <clears throat> you join the join the cold club. <laughs> yeah. It's and, and our house is designed as such that in the summertime we turn on the air conditioner to Cool down the upstairs, but we actually split up, so we live downstairs. It was getting you know, really sleep downstairs and everything. It's like ice cream family. And then gotcha. in the winter time, it's the same thing. We've got the heat on, but it's it's freezing downstairs. So. Oh yeah. Uh, okay, so I just texted saying yes. Okay, Kenny is getting on the call. Yay. Awesome. Kenny Wilson. Great, awesome. And he came from that uh, power team rotator. So he joined Xenia's team through the rotation. Great to meet him. And he, he came in uh, as executive for Xenia. Yeah. That's exciting. Awesome. I have not. What's his name? His name is Kenny Wilson. He Kenny. just joined. Mm -hmm. Kenny Wilson. Yeah, we, we welcomed him like about a week ago, right? A week ago, yeah. Yeah, sounds familiar. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been pretty exciting there. With that new rotator and the new system. I love it. Oh. Okay. I'm just got two more that we're waiting on, so that's okay. We can ask uh, Ron uh, any any question if you Yeah. Guys. Anybody got a question for me? Do you have any questions about <clears throat> No, right now. Any questions, guy? We keep asking questions all day long, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ron. No wonder he, he has to go to bed early, right, Ron? <laughs> we wear you out. I have I have not been doing that lately, though. I, I, I've been getting to bed around 8 or 9, so. Oh, that's late for you. But it, it's yeah. late time, right? 9, your time? It It's, I, it's uh, 6 o'clock my time now. Yeah, so... So yeah, I go. I get. I've been getting to bed around eight o'clock my time, but I'm up at three thirty my time. So. Oh, okay. I wish I could be a person that would go to bed early and get up early. I. Okay, so Kenny just joined. He said that he's on the call. Hi, Kenny. I see. Hi, Kenny. Another Maria. There's Maria. <laughs> oh yeah, Kenny's on. Great. Welcome, guys. Nice to meet you, guys. Thank you. Nice. nice to meet you, Ken. Welcome. I'm going to silence my phone. It's going to go next. 
Okay, well, I think we can go ahead and get started, Ron, whenever you're ready. Oops. Well, how's everybody doing this evening? Doing good, thank you. Doing good, That's, thank you. Let, let, me, let me ask that again real quick. How's everybody doing this evening? Awesome. Awesome. Yay, okay. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> right. uh, most of you I have met, uh, except for this is the first time we've met. My name is Ron Deering. Um, I am a 50K, on my way to 100K affiliate in the company. I started uh, just about a year ago this month. And um, when I got involved with the company, uh, we, we, it, it's just been about a little less than a year uh, oh. as, as far as getting the HempWorks products. I'm going to kind of mute everybody real quick here. Um, so we had them in, as of 2017, but it was, it was really on the upswing. Uh, we did not, all we had were the creams and the uh, oil. We did not have the cinnamon oil. We had no bath bombs. We had no coffee, none of that stuff. Uh, and the sprays. And I was introduced to this business about the second week of May. And I was having, still getting all of my medication ready for my, because of my uh, open heart surgery and all of that. And uh, I, I had every excuse in the world not to do this. I mean, I, my family was even telling me, you know, hey, maybe you ought to take it easy. You just had quadruple bypass. And then three months later, the, the quadruple bypass failed and you had a heart attack and you've got stints and, you know, you need to take it easy. And s some of the medication, I don't know if you guys just heard that big thunder, but um, some of the medication that they put you on makes you very, very tired. Um, I'm on a, what's called a beta blocker that makes you very tired. I'm on a, on, um, a statins, which cause your muscles and joints to ache. So you just, you feel just run down and tired all the time. And, it, you know, it's, it's, and I'm telling you this because I had every excuse in the world not to do the business. But when Aaron Parker showed this to me, he and I have known each other for quite a long time. And I had just come from another business that wasn't, I wasn't doing very well in. I was doing okay in, but not very good. Not as good as I wanted to. And I looked at this, and an hour later, I, I signed up. I didn't talk to Aaron at all. I was on a webinar with him and Robert Hollis. I clicked on the link and pre-enrolled and checked it out and said, okay, yep, this is, I found, found my final uh, retirement plan, and this is what I'm going to do. And so I, I just, I signed up and I signed up as a builder because I didn't know any better. I just kind of wanted to try the product and see what was going on. And it wasn't long after I got a message from Aaron saying, you know, is there any reason why you signed up as a builder? And I said, well, because I don't know, didn't know any better. I just, he said, well, you, you need to upgrade to an executive. <clears throat> and back then we didn't know any better. So I just bought an executive pack and upgraded to an executive. Didn't really get the products until the end of May. And so June was my first month. And during that time, the last two weeks of May, I saw all of these, I saw a number of people that had gotten promoted to the 5K. I think there was one individual, Corey Reynolds, that made it to 10K in his first month. And when we got the products and found out how amazing they were and how they made me feel, and my wife had just had rotator cuff surgery and didn't have to take one pain pill. And all I was doing was putting uh, the um, relief on the incisions, uh, we were just sold. So I sat down with my wife and I said, you know, honey, I'm going to make 5K my first month. I've seen people that are doing this. I know there are people on, on, in the company that made 5K affiliates their first month. And I'm just going to go crazy and I'm going to do this. So I'm going to tell you my secret. Before, she, she's already heard my secret, but I'm going to tell you my secret again. And, and I'm sure Lily knows what it is. But I applied my secret. And little did I know that in 19 days, I hit 10K affiliate. And I closed the month out at over 24,000 in volume, almost at 25K affiliate. And that was my first full 30 days in the business. Now, I tell you that for two reasons. One is because I believed what I did and what I'm going to share with you tonight was crucial in, in my success. 
But the other side of it is, is that I want you to know that it really took me 40 years plus 19. Okay. Just so you know, um, I've been doing this a long time. I've been in network marketing on and off since the 1970s. And I've gained a lot of knowledge. I've had a lot of failures. I've had a few successes, made six figures. But the big scheme of things is I had failed at a lot of business, at a lot of opportunities, mainly because I had a good corporate job making mid six figures and living a good life. And if it didn't work, it was okay. If it failed, it was okay. I still had a bunch of income coming in and, and still, you know, had, had a good life going on. It wasn't until, and, and there was always something about the business. There was always something either in the comp plan that I felt like we had to um, kind of tell people, you know, kind of skirt around. Maybe there was something about the product. Yeah, the product's really good, but, you know, you got to watch out for this. Or maybe there was something that the company was doing that wasn't really, you know, the best. And it seemed like no matter what company I ever got it in, there was always something that you found yourself having to explain away and, you know, avoid and all these things. And when I saw this company, I thought, wow, I, I just can't find anything wrong here. Now, are they having growing pains and there are things that, you know, it's like, yeah, but look at, look at the rate that the company is growing over 1100% from 9 million to 120 million in one year. I mean, yeah, I would have, most companies I've ever seen even do anything close to that have collapsed. So I just, I found a, a home that I just have no complaints about, you know, and, and there are things that people could possibly complain about. I, you know, I'm, I, I heard someone today say, all these people are raving about the new droppers, you know, and I was like, okay, there's a new dropper, I guess. And I looked at it and sure enough, there's a new dropper and it is really cool. Okay. Um, the fact is, is that I, the business for me, went from my head to my heart. And that's when things really changed. That's when everything, as far as my success and everything else changed, because now I became so passionate and so on fire about what I had that I could change people's lives with. And, and Lily will tell you, her and I's story, we've known each other for a while. We've been in another business together. And, and I kept reaching out to her, you know, she was driving down the road and I was reaching out to her and I kept telling her, it was like, Lily, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. And she, she was, you know, well, yeah, you know, maybe, I, you know, and I am just so honored and blessed and glad that she, she finally decided, you know, to jump on board. And she's, you know, one of those people that has just, just this amazing heart that is out there serving and, and doing so much for everybody. And you can see her passion and that's why she's having the success she's having. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. I'm very blessed have known you first of all if it weren't for you oh my i don't know well, i'm just so grateful to be here and i'm we, grateful to have this beautiful team you have you have uh, you know it's I'm, I'm just so proud of your team you know terry and you know and cassandra and julia and, and janie and, and maria both marias you guys are you guys are doing so well no. but i want to kick you i want to and i don't want to say kick you in the butt but I want, I want to kick you up a notch, okay? Um, because we are at a time in, in the year that a lot of people will tell you is, oh, you know, the summer, everybody else is taking a vacation, you might as well too, okay? And I will tell you, every time I've been in a company that I've had success, a good portion of my success has been in July and August. Because once you understand that you figure out what everybody else is doing. Now, what is everybody else doing in the summertime? They're taking vacations. They're, you know, letting their business go on hold. Uh, I've, I've heard it already from people. Yeah, I know, but the, you know, the summer is not good. So I'm going to, I'm going to spend time with my family. But then in September, man, I am kicking it in the butt. And I can tell you from 40 years of experience, it never, ever happens. Because you've got to start all over again. So if you don't keep the momentum going now, the key is you want to find out what everybody else is doing and do exactly the opposite. Well, what is everybody else doing? Everybody else is taking their foot off the pedal. So those people that 
put the pedal to the metal, not only do significantly better than everybody else, but you're able to reach out to people that probably 80% of the time may have gone with somebody else if it had been a time when that person was prospecting and out there working their business. But because they took off and you didn't, you've got the advantage. So now you want to know what my secret is, right? I don't know. I don't know, Lily. Should I tell them? Let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> Let the cat out of the bag. Okay. Ksenia knows already. She knows exactly what I'm going to say. But <laughs> it's 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 going to you're going to say I can't. There's no way I can do that. It's way too hard. It's way no. Here's what it is. Three words. Take massive action. <laughs> Okay. Now, you're all probably going, yeah, take passive action. What kind of advice is that? Well, it is without question the advice that I was given. When I reached out to Robert Hollis and said, okay, I'm on board, Robert. What do I do? You know what he said to me? He said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to say as little as possible. I'm thinking as little as possible to as many as possible, as fast as possible. Sounds like massive action to me. I want you to say as little as possible to as many as possible, as fast as possible. And here's <laughs> where we get caught and here's where we get stuck. And we were talking about this on the road to 1K uh, just a few minutes ago, but people get in this position where they're going along and they're talking to somebody and they're, they're talking to all these people and they're doing really good. They're talking to five, 10 people a day, maybe more, 25 people a day. And all of a sudden they get somebody and this person says, yeah, you know, I might be interested in looking at this. And everything stops. And it seems like for the next few days, all they're doing is trying to convince that one person that showed a little bit of interest to get in the business or to become a customer. And they've stopped all of their action. They've stopped all that they're doing. And they're spending all the time on this one person. And I can tell you that two things happen. One is you might convince that person to get in get involved okay but you're going to find that you're going to be convincing them to do everything for the rest of their time in business which won't be very long most of the time what happens is at the end of the day you have spent all that time trying to convince them and they said you know what the more i thought about it i just i don't think i'm going to do this and then you're sitting back all dejected bummed out <laughs> oh man I spent all that time. I can't tell you how many times I've had people reach out to me and say, Ron, I spent all this time. It's just not fair. I spent all this time. I said, yeah, no, it's not fair. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it, yeah. <laughs> say as little as possible to as many as possible, as fast as possible. And Ksenia, you know what? I told you I was going to get cards and I forgot my deck of cards, but... Oh. And I even went out there. I had to eat something, so that it got me squirrel. <laughs> but oh, the squirrel. Oh, if if I may ask you a question real quick, I have one yeah. girl in Maria Torres. She keeps hopping on, but she has to be logging on. She's she freezes or she's not able to hear anything. She's on her phone. What do you suggest, Ron? She's already she's, checked her her audio on the phone and everything. So. Does she have any other device she can get on with, like a pad or her computer? Okay. If she can get on with something else other than her phone, that might help. Okay, thanks. Yeah, because I see her coming in and out. In fact, I am going to turn off that dean so that we don't have to close the okay. okay, so if you, if you think of it as a deck of cards, if I'm sitting with a deck of cards and I'm flipping these cards, I'm looking for the aces. So I'm gonna flip these cards as fast as I can. I'm gonna just start flipping and flipping and flipping. Ace, boom, put the ace aside. That's a, that ace is a HempWorks executive. And then I'm gonna start flipping, start flipping again. Ace, boom, flip, ace, boom. Then I'm gonna teach, I'm gonna get four of those aces. And then I'm gonna take those four people and I'm gonna teach them how to flip cards. Here's how you do it, you flip cards. Now, everybody wants a script. Right. So what do I say when I reach out to you? Anybody want a script? Okay. Here's, here's, and, I, and, and this is the joke, right? Think about when you're out going around and meeting people on an everyday basis, right? You're driving around and you, you go to a, your local grocery store. You know, we have a Winco here or a, 
Albertsons or Safeways or whatever they might be, right? Your Costco. And let's say I run into Lily and I want to, I want to talk to her. This is what you probably do, right? You reach in your pocket and you pull out your script. And I say, okay, I'm gonna be talking to Lily. I'm at the grocery store. It says, if you're talking to Lily, this is, oh, okay. Hey, Lily, how are you doing? And you wait for the answer. Oh, good, I'm glad you're having a, is that what you do? Does anybody do that when you're out meeting people when you're walking around? <laughs> of course you don't, right? But we get online and we think we have to have a script. We gotta have a script. How do I talk to people? I don't know, how do you talk to people in, in real life? That's what they want to hear. That's what they want to be. That's how they want to connect with you. So if I'm out walking around talking to somebody and I run into Lily and we're in a store together, maybe we're, you know, you know, we have your best conversation and the checkout line, right? You're standing in the checkout line and you, you look down and you see that, you know, Lily might have a pineapple, one of my favorite foods. And I might strike up a conversation with her. It's like, oh, what do you, what do you typically do with your pineapples? You know, do you make pineapple upside down cake or something? No, I might not do that with Lily if I've never met her before because I'm a guy and she's a girl, right? But um, if if I was talking to Kenny, say, then, you know, I might, you know, ask him, you know, what do you, you know, you look like you got some greens and vegetables there. Are you like a health nut or something? I might make fun of him a little bit or do something like that. Who knows? But I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to them the same way that I would talk to them in a normal manner. Now, when I go online, if I'm reaching out to Lily online, I'm gonna have that same conversation. Hey, how you doing? But where am I gonna get the information? I'm gonna get the information from her profile. So I'm gonna look at her profile. I'm gonna see that, oh wow, she's in, she's in Texas. Here's some things I see her. Oh, she knows Carlos the alien. Man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to her about Carlos the alien. You know? And I'm gonna strike up a conversation with her just like I would any other way. I'm not going to go look and find a script. Now, I will tell you, when I first started in June, I did have a little script that I put together and I copied and pasted that out. And I changed it every so often, but I was trying to go as fast as I could. Okay. But once they responded back to me, because the script was relatively generic, it was like, hi, how are you doing? I didn't say, how are you doing? Because you never want to do that. You never want to ask somebody on Messenger how they're doing. It shows that you haven't taken the time to look at their profile. And, and it's, it's what I consider lazy marketing. But you can say, I hope this finds you awesome or something like that. Hey, I even, I had one, one uh, uh, script that I used for a while. It wasn't really a script. I just started typing in with people I knew and said, and said hey, you know what? We've known each other for a long time on Facebook. I, really, I know your time is uh, important to you and my time is important to you. I'm on a 90 day bliss. Uh, would you be open to taking a look at what we're doing as, it, we have a system here that's virtually building my business for me on autopilot. And I can't tell you how many people came back and said, yeah, sure, I'll take a look. I had a lot of people that came back and said, man, thanks a lot for thinking about me, but I'm really focused on what I'm doing right now. If things change, I'll reach out to you. I had one young lady that said, you know, no, you know what? I'm just not interested in that right now. I'm, I'm busy with my work. I, I've got another business. She's, she's a good network marketer. She's, you know, she's got another business. Um, and I sent, so I sent her a thing six months ago saying, Hey, things have changed. We've updated, man. We're, we're number one in the, in the world now. Dada, so some other things. Are you sure you're not open to taking a look? No nope. crickets. A week and a half ago, I got a message from her saying, would you please tell me what you're doing now? I'm interested in looking. Wow. Within a couple of days, she signed up as a hemp work exec. Today, her and I were talking. She's working with one of the top millionaires from a company called It Works. I don't know if it's around anymore, but the lady's left. And wow. Robert Hollis is going to be meeting and talking with this woman. And um, right. so who knows what's going to happen. That's amazing. Congratulations. So what's the, what's the point of that, right? The point of that is, is that right now what you need to be doing, that's why I say, right, what's the, what's the secret sauce? Say as little as possible to as many as possible, as fast as possible. Massive action. What you're doing is sowing seeds. That is all you're doing. I grew up on a farm, and that was kind of the funnest part for us because I don't know if any of you have gardens and stuff, and if you like weeding gardens, 
you're a different type of person than me because as a as a you know 13 year old child uh in in the farmlands of michigan weeding was not my favorite thing but driving a tractor and seeding and put you know cutting the rows laying the seeds covering them up and everything guess what would have happened to our farm if i'd have gone okay mom dad i'm going out to put some seeds in come back i put one in i'm gonna do another one tomorrow <laughs> I, I put one in i'm gonna do another one tomorrow <laughs> right it, it, it just we laugh because it, it, it's ridiculous but yet in our business that's all we're doing that's all that we can control i can't control those seeds that we planted in in the in the acres on our farm i didn't i i all i could do is plant them cover them water them fertilize them make sure that's all i could do that's the only process i had control of i had no control of when they were going to break through the ground that's all in god's hands i don't have any control over that okay. you don't have any control over who's going to reach out to you and say i want this Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's an old saying that you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. You can't say the right thing to the wrong person. And I believe that. I really believe that. There, there are people out there that, you know, the timing may, may, may not be right. Something in their life may not be right. And no matter what you say to them, they're just not going to join. And there are other people you could say, hey, we're selling hot dogs. I'm in. I'm in. You got What kind of hot dogs? I don't care. I'm in. Do you, do you want to know about the comp plan? No, I'm, I'm in. I'm in, right? <laughs> now, we all want that person because hopefully they're going to be a builder and they're going to do really good things. But here's the key. And I love Michael Jordan saying, I miss 100% of the shots I don't take. Guess what happens if I get to that person before you do? Who do you think they're going to join? Well, they may be joining one of you because I give a lot of more away. But, you know, but the reality is they're going to join me. Not because it's me, necessarily, but because I happen to be the one that reached out to him. As little as possible, to as many as possible, as fast as possible. Massive action. Now you've got four and a half days left. Essentially four days and, and whatever you're going to do today. And here's my call to action to each and every one of you. And I know, Yulia, you've got, you've got uh, you know, a, a nephew over and you're going camping and everything, but I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter. Okay, you still you still probably have some time during the day. I don't care if you have 15 minutes in a day or you have a couple of hours in a day. I'm still working. I love it. I'm still working. Okay. Yeah. Because if it, I don't know how many of you saw my live today, but it was, are you willing to pay the price for your success? Are you willing? to do what it takes to get to this. I make five figures a month now after a year in the business. I'm not making what Aaron's making. I'm not making what Jenna's making. I'm not making what Robert's making. But would, let me ask you, how many of you here would like to be making about $8,000 a month right now? Anybody? Anybody want to make 8,000 a month? Okay. Anybody want to make 5,000 a month? How about an extra thousand dollars a month? Anybody want to make just an extra thousand dollars a month, right? Are you willing to do what it takes to do that? Because here's what I'll tell you. It's going to be hard. There's going to be days. And Lily and I have had this conversation more times than we can count, right? Where it's like, right. Oh, man, I'm right there. I need more. I'm, I'm pushing hard. I'm, I'm going. I'm right up to the, you know? Yep. <laughs> but the question I would ask her, is it worth it? And I know what the answer is. Absolutely. <laughs> you guys haven't heard the story of Sonia Line. Sonia Line is a 500K affiliate in our company. She got started. She was one of Jenna's first recruits. She got started back in 2014 when they only had the, the, the sprays. She's from Canada. So even in 2017, when they introduced the CBD oil, they actually had it in Canada for a while, and then they took it away. But she was telling me her story. We met in uh, Vegas at the convention last year, and then we did a couple of lives together, and we, we sat and chatted for a while. And she was telling me her story, and she said, you know, Ron, what most people don't know is those first two years in the business in My Daily Choice, 2014, 2015, and 16, it was a disaster. 
I, I, it took me two years to make 5K affiliate. It took her two years, two years to get to 5K affiliate. She said people were quitting left and right. There were people that the politics were ridiculous. People didn't think Josh, he was too young. He didn't know what he was doing. He wasn't very smart. They didn't know him, you know, all of these things. Obviously they were wrong, <laughs> you know. 28 year old kid takes a company from 9 million to 120 million. Um, I think he knows something. Call me crazy. So she went through all of this, but she said, you know, I knew I had faith. I knew what Josh and Jenna could do. I knew what this company could do. And when they introduced CBD and brought that line on, everything changed. And because I stayed in it, even though it took me two years to make 5K, she said, now I'm making sick fantasy money. Now, if I were to ask any of you here, if I were to say, Terry, let me ask you a quick question. If I could offer you an opportunity that in four years you could be making fifty to $60,000 a month, is that something you might be open to looking to? I'm sure Terry would say, Absolutely, right? But let me do a Paul Harvey on you and tell you the rest of the story, Terry. <laughs> For the first two years, you're gonna be miserable. People are gonna quit. You're gonna be putting out money and time and effort. Your family's gonna tell you that you, you're crazy. You're not gonna have hardly any success and everything. But then at the end of that two years, you're gonna make your first big promotion. And then from there, the hair is going to stand up on your arms and you're going to have so much success that you're not going to believe it. Well, most people will say two years. Are you kidding me? Because they've in their minds said 50 or 60,000 over four years. Hey, I'm going to be making big money already along the way, but it may not work that way. I told Sonia when she told me that story, I said, I, I've got to give it to you. I am so proud of you and, and just enamored with the fact that I, I would have, six months into it, I probably would have been going through the, you know, I, I think maybe I'm going to quit this, you know. I would have stayed a year, I'm sure. She said, you know, Ron, just about every day I woke up and said, I, I got to quit. And then I'd look at my vision, I'd look at my husband, I'd look at my kids and say, yeah, but I can't. I can't. There are lives to impact. There are people that need me. There are people that are going to meet me because of my <clears throat> dedication, because of my commitment, because of my consistency, because of my ability to pay the price that their lives are going to be changed. And she's changed thousands of lives now. Just think if she was stopped. Just think about if you decide to quit. How many people we're in a business that is physically changing people's lives. Every single day I hear 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 stories of people that are telling me, I don't care what happens with my business. I will never stop buying these products because of what they've done in my life. You want the secret sauce? Go to work like you've never worked before in your entire life. Go to work like you have absolutely no options of anything else that you can do. Burn the boats, tell yourself every single morning exactly why you're doing this, what your vision is, and take massive action. And what you need to do between now and the end of the month is you need to set aside a time every single day I don't care, 30 minutes at the minimum, an hour would be great. In that hour, I want you to do nothing but profit-producing activities. I don't want you to watch cat videos. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, make, I make jokes about cat videos. Some, some of them are pretty funny. I, gotta admit. I don't want you scanning Facebook to find out you know, who's put a good post up there. Anything like that. If it isn't a profit producing activity, such as getting somebody in front of your opportunity or your products, you shouldn't be doing it for that hour. 
the rest of the day, personal development is essential. Find somebody that you can, a book that you know that's good out there. Uh, Jenna's given us a list of amazing books. There's amazing people like Les Brown and Robert Hollis and uh, Bob Proctor and Eric Worre and Ray Higdon. There's tons of people, Tony Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, there's, there's tons and tons of people that, you know, pick up a book, read the book from Kip, Kip the Cover, we call it, Kip the Cover, uh, the cover to cover. Take some notes and, you know, do your personal development, but take an hour of your day. If you're, you're, if you're not working, take more. Take a couple of hours, but take at least an hour if you set aside 30 minutes at a minimum and just reach out to as many people as you can. So starting tomorrow, let's say you reach out to 20 people and you get them, you, you present, you, you ask them if they're open, you just talk to them, you connect with them. The next day, do 15 people or 25 people. The next day, do 30 people. Increase it every day from the, from the day you went before. Focus yourself, put the blinders on, don't let anything or anybody distract you from what you're doing. Go with you know, unbridled passion that you are just, you're not gonna let anything or anybody sidestep you from what you're doing and just take massive action. Whatever you've done before, triple it, quadruple it, do more. Put it in your mind that you don't have any other options, you've burned the boat, this is your last resort and you need to make this happen. Now, if you do that, here's what I'm gonna tell you. It's gonna be hard. You might do it the first day and the second day you're gonna go, mm, yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do it, you know? Oh, you know, maybe, oh wait, I, I got a message from, from Sally. Let me answer that real quick. 20 minutes later, oh, okay, yeah, but I said I would do an hour. My hour's almost up. Okay, good, I did it, I did it. I talked to a couple of people. I've been, I've been known to do that myself. Not anymore, I don't. But when I sit down and I say, okay, here's my daily method of operation, I sit down and I put in my calendar, I'm in my mind, I'm going to do, I'm going to do my lives at 8.30 every morning. I'm going to have my devotions and my time in the morning when I get up at 3.30. And I, at a certain time of the day, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to start reaching out to people. At a certain time of the day, I'm going to reach out to my team. And I'm going to talk to the team and I'm going to help the team and I'm going to do everything I can. To, but you need to get your team, right? So you need to be in a place where <coughs> you are in a build mode right now. You are talking to saying as little as possible to as many as possible to as fast, as fast as possible. That's massive action. And if you do that, I promise you, if you do that, Okay, As those three words. Hey, Amy, those three words, if you forwards do that, you will go into July with some phenomenal momentum that you've never had before. But you can't lie to yourself. I'm not going to, you know, take accountability and check and see if you're doing it. You're going to have to be accountable to yourself. That's what we do as big boys and big ladies, right? We're accountable to ourselves. This is our business. This isn't a job. Okay? And jobs are easy. You go to your job, they tell you what to do, you do it, and you come home, and then you're done with it, right? This is your dream, your lifestyle that you're crafting here. When you go to a job, guess who's like you're crafting? Somebody else. They're getting all the perks. You're crafting your own. How bad do you want it? Are you willing to pay the price? Because if you're willing to pay the price, I'm going to tell you, the rewards are phenomenal. The rewards are phenomenal. You know what I did today? I got up whenever I wanted. I went outside with my grandkids. We squirted the hose at each other. We chased the puppy around and let him bite my hands. And we had a good time, right? And then I came back and went to work. Because I can look out my window because this is my office. Or down at the, we've got an amazing, beautiful lake here. We can go down to the lake and hang out there. I can take my phone with me. I can do all these things. Because... I've paid the price up front and I'm paying the price now. Massive action. There are no secret words that you need to say. There are no scripts you need to learn. Talk to people like you talk to people. 
think about what you're doing. When you're reaching out to people, think about, you know, your Facebook profile is your home, right? So when I walk onto your Facebook profile, I ought to see your home. It'd be, it ought to be like, I've just walked into Maria's home, both Maria's homes, <laughs> Maria B's home. And uh, I look around and I can tell, you know, maybe what decor, maybe it's Americana, Victorian, whatever the decor is. I can see things on her tables that, oh, she like sees knickknacks, you know, they have maybe a dog. I, I, I can walk into your home and find out a lot about it. If you walk into my house, you're going to see, guess what? You're going to see bottles of the product. You're going to, if you go into our bathroom, you're going to see, you know, our face creams. You're going to see coffee, the CBD coffee on the counter in the kitchen. You go downstairs, you would have seen bath bombs. I, I didn't, I'm not saying I used them all. You know, I, I've, caught, I, I've convinced my wife they're really good, so she likes them now. But, okay, I did take a bath. I, you know, I did use them. But anyways, I'm not doing a video, so don't even ask. But um, you know, so why shouldn't your Facebook profile, which is your home, be the same thing, right? People should be able to go, I should be able to go to Janie's profile and look at it and say, okay, I'm just, this is like being in her house, man. I know all about her. I know what she likes, what she doesn't like. She's got a business. She's got these products. Don't let people convince you that you should not talk about what you do because you wouldn't do that in real life. It's not spammy. You cannot spam in your own home. Can you imagine somebody walking into your house and say, hey, Janie, man, you've got product on your coffee table. That's spamming me. Would you please remove that? What would you do? Yeah, you'd laugh at him and say, are you out of your mind? Here's what I'm going to remove. You. <laughs> right? So your profile is yours. If people don't like it, don't go to it. Now, if I put my post or my link on somebody else's profile, be like me walking into your house, I walk into Lily's house and put all my product down and say, hey, tell, tell everybody about this. I'm out of here. You know, we wouldn't do that. So you don't do that. That is spammy. Putting out things on other people's home that they didn't ask for, right? But on your own home, in your own home, in your profile, people should be able to look at it and go, wow, man, Amy, it's so glad to meet you. I know, I feel like I know you. I feel like I've been over to your house, man. This is amazing. Is there anybody here that doesn't know I've got a new puppy, right? Does anybody here not know Thomas? <laughs> you know, most of you have seen Thomas go through his long hair to his short hair and all of that stuff. Is there anybody here that doesn't know that I'm in hemp works in my daily choice? It should be the same answer for all of those, right? So when you're out there on your Facebook profile and you're putting stuff out there and everything, I want you to start thinking about everything that you do when you're connecting with people just like the normal world. Don't try to make it different because you're online. People want to know who you are. I love it when I listen to Jenna talk about this. I mean, she's, she is so down to earth about it. She, and, and I don't know, anybody here want a million dollars a month? I'm going to listen to someone that's making a million dollars a month. I think they got a clue because even at 10%, that's a hundred thousand a month. So I, I mean, I can, I can, you know, learn from her. And she's right up front. If you're reaching out to your audience, and here's, I don't want to ramble on too much longer, but here's the one thing I will tell you too. If you're reaching out to your audience and your audience isn't responding, it's time to change your audience. Okay. And here's what I mean about that. You may have been on Facebook for a long time before you got involved in this business. So you've, you've gathered all of these friends and people on your Facebook profile. Maybe you've got 500, 1,000, a couple of thousand, whatever it might be, right? <clears throat> and those are just people you've gathered along the way. Not necessarily in any rhyme or reason. But now you're trying to, and maybe these people are your friends and you've connected with them because of some hobby you had or something like that, okay? But now all of a sudden you're trying to present to them a business, you're trying to, you know, connect with them and tell them about your business and maybe about CBD and all that. And they're going, what? You know, think about it as let's say you've, you've just started a business and it's cat products, but all of the people that you've connected with all over the years have been dog people. And now you're reaching out to them saying, Hey man, come on, check it out. I've got this new cat business. Well, we don't like cats. You go, man, I've, I've told everybody about my business and nobody wants to see anything about it. Well, guess what? It's like Jenna's always talking about. It's time to refresh your audience. 
It's time to get your audience in sync with what you're trying to do. So now I need to go out to groups that are congruent with what I'm trying to do and start friending and talking to people out there and building relationships with this new audience that's open, right? I know who my avatar is. And what I mean by that, I know who my perfect target audience is that I want to work with because it's my business. So I know who I want to work with. I want to work with people that are, you know, 25 to, to 60 years old. They've got a good income coming in. They may not be rich, but they, they've got a, a, maybe a career, 2.5 kids, um, you know, <clears throat> maybe professionals and so forth. So I, you lay out exactly who you want. I've even named my avatars, John and Janie. And I've got a list of what Johnny likes and what Janie likes. So now when, when I put a post out on my profile, I'll put a post out and I'll say, you know what? I wonder what John would think about this. So I look at it. I say, oh, John's a dog lover. Oh, and I'm putting a post out about a cat. Uh, no, let's not, let's not put that post out because right? John's not going to like that. And I'm trying to attract the Johns of the world, right? I want a John. So we're, <laughs> that's probably not a good word. I don't want a John, but um, you got to watch what you say, everything in, the, in this day and age. But I'm looking for that Sam. Let's call it a Sam. Okay, so I'm looking for the Sam. And Sam, I know maybe Sam is an outdoor camping person. So guess what groups I'm going to go to and talk to? I'm going to go to camping groups and things like that and start interacting with people on those groups and try to gather some of those Sams and Sallys that like to do that. So I need to change my audience. So now that when I present to them what I'm doing, they're going to go, oh, yeah, that sounds like something I would love. Not look at you like you've got a third eye in the middle of your forehead. Take massive action. Make sure your audience is good. This is, put, this is how you put together a whole business that works. One of the reasons that I had so much success in the beginning was I had worked on my audience over the years. So my audience of six or 7,000 people on Facebook now are all people that are looking for opportunities and looking to build a business and looking to work online and so forth. Now, a lot of those people already have one, but they're still entrepreneurs, right? Why did Aaron have so much success? Because he had done the same thing. Why did Vince Ortega have so much success? Why do, why do some of these people have, you know, when people say, well, I just got into network marketing. It's my first time. And look at me, look at how much success I've had. What they don't realize is that's not really true. They've been networking for a long time. And they happen to be networking with people that are of like mine and open to, you know, get make some extra money and so forth. They just didn't realize it. So when they reached out, for their first time, which wasn't really, when they reached out, they had an audience that was receptive of what they were doing. So they had this success. And it looks like, wow, they've never even done network marketing before and they've had this massive success. It's not really true. We all do network marketing every day of our life. We're all doing it. We're all reaching out to people and networking with people. Some people have already developed a network that happens to be congruent with what they're gonna be doing. So it looks like they didn't know anything and they had success. So this is what I want you to do for the, for the remainder of the month to get yourself momentum up. Take massive action as little as possible to as many as possible to as, as quickly as possible and start looking at your Facebook profile. Start tweaking it. Start looking at your audience. Start seeing who you are really wanting to work with and who your target audience should be. And if it's not where you want it now, start developing a new audience. Okay. Questions. Has this helped you guys at all? If you want this, Matt, you've got this. This is such an amazing journey. So who has a question for me? Got a few minutes here. Amy. I do, just real quick. So I know that you're focusing mostly on Facebook. Facebook, I have this, I only have like a hundred friends on Facebook. I've kept it limited to like friends and I mean family and, and stuff like that and close friends. But my Instagram is where most of my audience is. So, I mean, would you say that it's advantageous to just focus on Instagram or should I be focusing on all social media outlets? No. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> Instagram, you know, the, the, gorilla, the gorilla in the room is Facebook, right? Everybody okay. knows. 
The gorilla in the room is Facebook. Who owns Instagram? Well, Facebook does. Facebook. Yeah. So right. to me, the fact that you've got a big audience on Instagram, that's where, I would, that's where I would work. And in the meantime, on the side, I would start building up my Facebook profile. Okay. Okay. But if you've got a big audience on Instagram, Instagram is great. I know a lot of people that are making great incomes and building businesses on Instagram all day long. Okay. But I wouldn't go to Twitter and Snapchat yeah. and Pinterest and all those because you get spread too thin. Become an expert at one thing, okay? okay. Um, that's, I think, how a lot of people fail in marketing online is because they want to become social media experts and they, they hit Twitter, they hit you know, LinkedIn, they hit Pinterest, they hit Snapchat, they hit Instagram and Honeygrams and Graham Crackers and all of them, right? They hit them all and they can't figure out why they're not having any success. Become an expert in one thing. You know, there's, there's a story, of, most of you have heard of a guy named Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, in my opinion, I'm, I'm a martial arts guy, and Bruce Lee, to me, was, if not the greatest, one of the greatest martial artists in the world. And he was asked years ago when he was still alive what he was think, thought of all these people that did, that were coming up in the MMA arena. It wasn't called MMA back then, but mixed martial arts. They were, they were doing all these different styles and everything. And was he afraid of all these guys that could do, you know, Korean and Japanese style and Brazilian and jujitsu and all this stuff? And he said, <clears throat> absolutely not. What I'm more afraid of is that one person that takes a punch every day and perfects that punch or that kick to ad nauseum. I mean, just all they do is practice that punch and practice that kick and they became they become an amazing perfectionist at that one thing. He said, I'm much more afraid of them because all they've got to do is get it in one time and I'm gone. So when you think about what I need, you need to do, find one thing that makes sense to you. If it's not Facebook, like Amy, it's Instagram and that's where you have your biggest following, become the Instagram queen. Okay. Any other questions? That was a great question. Oh, come on, are you guys shy? I don't bite. Come on, guys. I think I think there are more questions. Thank you, Amy, for asking that. That's a very good question. It is. How many of you really want this? How many are willing to pay the price? Yulia, Castanya, Amy, Terry, Mar Maria, 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 Lily, of course, man, you're already paying the price. All of you guys are. And I can't see the rest of your hands, but I'm sure Kenny's got his hands up. Janie's got her hand up. No, it's just, you know what, I already told Lily a couple times, uh, like every single day I feel like Sonia Lane, you know, the one that you just spoke about, because I have people that come and go, come and go. <laughs> and I, like, and every day I have that image of Sonia Lane in front of me, I'm like, it's like, but I'm, I'm sticking, you know, I believe in this. It's just, we have to find the right people. You do. And it's, it's, it's all it is. It's a sorting game. That's why we, you know, you can sort slow or you can sort fast. Yeah. It, it, how many of you guys, if I may ask, how many, you can type it in the comments if, if your camera is hitting, but um, how many of you guys have actually done network marketing? I don't think, I don't, I think maybe Maria has, Maria Bonilla. I'm not sure who else has. It's amazing that Maria, Maria Torres has. Not very many people, not very many people on my team have actually done network marketing and Yulia's on top of that, among the top there that has never done network marketing and it is, it's doing it. Also, um, we have Terry that's never done network marketing and Amy. Yeah, so you guys are you guys are champs. Yeah. Proud of you guys. Yeah, guess what? This might be hard to believe but there was a time when i had never done network marketing i wasn't born a network marketer that's right 
I started out in network marketing and I was, and I'm still terrible. I, I learned, I learned something every single day, but here's what I'll tell you. I think people that don't know network marketing are better off than the people that do because you guys don't have any preconceived notions. You just do what you're told and go out and, and, and work. It is really no different than anything else we do in life. We network all the time. I mean, how, you know, we've, we've probably heard this example a hundred times. Anybody see a good movie lately? Gone to a good restaurant? Right? And you told somebody about it. Oh, well, my kids are notorious for that. Uh, you know, they'll, dad, dad, have you seen the new Avengers? You know what I say to them? I haven't seen it yet, but it sounds like you're network marketing. <laughs> sounds like you're network marketing. You're, you, you're trying to convince me to go do something that you did. Hmm, must be a scam, right? <laughs> we do it every day of our life. I mean, I don't know, I, Kenny's the only other guy out here, but I'll tell you what, when in my very, very young years when I was dating, that was network marketing at its best, right? I was always trying to, you know, trying to convince somebody to just go out on a date with me. <laughs> you know, so in, you, because you haven't done it before, you're actually in a better position than a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Because so many people who have done it before think they know everything mm -hmm. and are very uncoachable and um, they just, yeah. they're, they're hard to work with, right? I really agree with you on that, Ron. I have to agree with you on that because they, People pick up different. Um, they're not coachable because they already have their. They think that they already have their format and their system, and it's very very hard to change someone that's already. They're setting their ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yes. Hey, and Yulia, I'll tell you this. Um, Sonia was was in uh, in Nashville at the Nashville Roadshow, and so. We had, her and I had a chance to, to chat again for a little bit. And then we were on the stage together. And she is just, she, be, because of her journey, she's got, a, to me, one of the most amazing stories because of her journey. So always remember and keep in mind that what you're going through right now to get to the success that I know you're all going to have, this is part of the journey and the story that you're going to be able to tell. People, people hear her story. And like I said, you're, you're, you've got her story up in front of you, right? It's right there. People hear her story and see her now and, and who she is and how she's grown as a person. Another one that was up on the stage is Celie Smith. She's another one that's got a, a, an amazing story. And, you know, when, when you see the people up there with these stories and you listen to their stories, it helps you do a couple of things. One is it helps you relate to the fact that, wow, it's just like you said, Yulia, now I, I can relate because I'm going through the same thing. So there's hope. There's hope at the end of the, at the, end of the, the storm, right? The other thing is, is that you realize how powerful your story is. Because there's going to be thousands of people out there that are in the same position. You're going to get people on your team. You're going to build a team of thousands of people and they're going to come to you and say, Yulia, what did you do? Man, you're, you're a, you're a 500 K affiliate. How did you do it, man? That's amazing. And you're going to say, you know what? I struggled like crazy in the beginning. You know how I did it? I made a commitment to pay the price and I took massive action and just paid the course. And they're going to look at you just like they look at Lily and I, and they're going to want to know what the secret sauce is. And McDonald's doesn't make it. None of the other places make it. The secret sauce is <laughs> what I told you. Terry, you have a question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Sylvia here with me. One of the questions that, you know, she was also saying, because, you know, she, she actually goes, visits, you know, people at their homes and, she says she's always talking about CBD to people, but one thing that they're always asking her is if, if, if it, you know, a bottle has an expiration date. You know, I have not looked at that. I, some, somebody told me a, six months to a year, maybe, or something like that. But I don't, I don't know. I'll have, to, I'll have to find out for sure. Okay. Expir, expiration date in my house is, you know, Maybe. I mean, I, I, mine wouldn't expire because, I mean, I consume it, you know, yeah, I don't get right. an opportunity. 
I can't imagine, you know, if someone asked me that, my, my kind of my next question would be, well, let me ask you a question. How often do you think you'd want to use it? And if they say, well, you know, maybe just once in a while, if I have any pain or anything, um, then, you know, the, then, it, then that might be an issue. Yeah. But most people, when they start using it, use it every day. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't imagine. I use mine. I, I, I take one of, a dropper full of this in the morning and, and before I go to bed every single day. Sometimes during the day, I'll take some more. I mean, it just depends. Sure. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you. I hope that answers your question. It, it did. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys. I hope this has been helpful. I want to see you guys just go into July with unbelievable momentum. That means you need to put the pedal down tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, you just you got four days. I'd love to hear some amazing success stories over the next four days from you. Even if, it's, even if it's, you know, I, I just, I went crazy and I signed up two people. That's awesome. Working on it, Lily, working on it. There you go, girl. You got it. You're on. <laughs> yes. Who said that, Terry? That was uh, Maria Bonilla. <laughs> Maria Bonilla. Oh, there she is. There. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good to see all your faces, by the way, too. So thank you. You know, Terry, good to see you again. Maria's, Janie, good to see you. Cassandra, thank, thank you. Thank you. It feels, you again. It feels amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure the next next time we're gonna have everybody more because this was kind of last minute, and I'm in a, in that and that's okay. You know, that you don't want to show your face. Sometimes you're not prepared or whatever. That's fine. Well, and. <laughs> I'm just, I'm glad you guys are, you know, I reached out to, to Lily this afternoon and said, Hey, when can we get your team together? Let's, let's talk. Let's, let's, you know. Yeah. I appreciate that so much. I was, I was so happy that you were free. And you, you know, you had that slot that was like meant for us. And thank you. Thank you so much, Ron. You're, you are very, very welcome. God bless you all. And uh, let's just make the next four days phenomenal. Something that we can talk about. Let's create stories over the next four days. Yeah. <laughs> stories. Fire team. Fire team. Yep. You guys All right, are guys. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining. God bless you. Love you. God Thank bless you. you. Good night, guys. Night, everybody. <laughs>